Hi. The Sonata No. 8 in C minor, Opus 13, is one of Beethoven's best-loved sonatas. Um, Beethoven wrote 35 piano sonatas, and really this, this whole output spans his entire composing career. And so the piano sonatas are, give us a wonderful opportunity to kind of look through a window into the work of Beethoven as the various periods of his composition unfolded and developed. Um, this sonata is also known as the Pathétique. It's not a title that Beethoven gave to it, but certainly the title that his publisher favoured. Written in 1798, when Beethoven was 27, and published in the following year. Dedicated to his great friend, Prince Karl von Lichnowsky. Um, it comes in three movements. The first movement is uh, starts with a grave section and breaks into an allegro di molto e con brio section. And then the graves make further appearances later in, in between the, the allegro sections. We then have a very beautiful adagio cantabile as the second movement and a rather more light-hearted rondo to finish. In terms of the overall structure of these movements. The first movement is in a sonata form, even though it's not entirely conventional as a sonata form. We've got this introductory grave section, which is actually quite a big dramatic statement. Uh, it's followed by the exposition going at a quick tempo in 2-2 two, two time. Slightly unusually, um, it contains three themes. So we've got the C minor theme, which is the initial theme, and then we get two sort of second subject themes, one in E flat minor and another in E flat major. Bit of a surprise to be in E flat minor. I mean, E flat major is the relative major key. E flat minor, a little bit not predicted there really. Um, but that's what happens. And then there's a codetta that closes the section. Um, there's then a repeat, of course, which is what we expect in a sonata form movement. And most uh, performers go back to the beginning of the Allegro di Molto section and repeat from there, where we do find repeat marks on the score. Some performers actually go back and repeat the opening graph section as well, which is an interesting thing to think about if you're performing the piece. We then get a development section that starts in G minor with the reappearance of the graph. Um, and when we come to the recapitulation, we're revisiting the themes of the exposition as we would expect, but this time in different keys. And um, we get a very dramatic coda where we revisit the graph and then we've got a very quick, uh, short blast of Allegro to finish. So that's the outline framework of the first movement. In the second movement, the Adagio Cantabile, um, we have a main theme that comes three times in A flat major. And then we have two modulatory episodes in between uh, and a brief coda at the end. So in some ways, this movement has a sort of ternary shape to it, but it's also a little bit of a rondo structure because of this main theme reappearing. So quite an interesting structure in the second movement. And then to finish, um, a brisk rondo again in 2-2 in C minor. And there are certain links as well between the main theme, for example, and the second allegro theme of the first movement. There's also a, a slightly less clear to the theme of the second movement here as well. So there's a sense of three separate movements, but the three movements being uniform, unified. Uh, so really we've got a sort of sonato, ro sonata rondo form, including a coda to finish. Now, having given the sort of general background of that, and it's very easy to research more detail on that, and also very easy to research a bit more on the structure if you want to do that, really what this course of films is about is an in-depth harmonic analysis of the piece. We're going to be exploring all of the chords that are used throughout the three movements of the piece. We're going to be exploring the modulations, um, how chords are used in colourful ways uh, to add character and drama. And in passing, we'll be looking at other issues like the use of texture, dynamics, use of the piano and so on. So it should give you a real insight into how this piece works. 
So really, who are these films useful to? Well, they'll certainly be useful to anybody who's going to perform this piece, who maybe wants a bit of insight into what's going on in the structure and the harmonic language in order to form a good sound interpretation of the piece. Um, it will also be particularly useful to those who are interested in the music of Beethoven and possibly the piano sonatas in particular. It will also be interesting, hopefully, to composers who want to think more about how to develop and how to use harmony, how to write effective modulation in their own music. So it should have some value for a great number of people. And another group of people as well who are students of harmony, who just want to understand how harmonic analysis works, this piece gives us a wonderful opportunity to explore what goes on in terms of how to go about harmonic analysis, which would be easily transferred to other pieces of music and should do a great job in equipping you to explore harmonic analysis of other pieces as well. So I hope you enjoy the uh, films that lie ahead. Uh, it will be particularly useful if you can have a score of the music to hand so you can really follow what's going on. And feel free to pause the film as often as you want to if you want to make some notes or mark things into the score because we're going to move at a fair pace through the music. And of course the bottom line is when all the analysis is done and all the thinking about the piece is done, what we're really trying to do here is to get inside the mind of Beethoven to explore what was really going on behind the composition of this masterpiece by such a great composer. And that should inspire us all as musicians, wherever we're coming from, whether we're academics, whether we're performers, whether we're composers, whether we're just interested in discovering more about this wonderful music. So I hope you enjoy all that lies ahead in exploring this marvellous sonata by Beethoven. <laughs>